Hi students, welcome to the English videos for 12th standard. Right. Today, we are going to learn a new topic from the first unit, grammar. The title of the grammar section today we are going to discuss is modal auxiliary verbs. Right. What is modal auxiliary verbs? Before going into the topic, we shall learn a quick overview about verbs. What is a verb? Verb is the heart of a sentence. Without verb, it's difficult to construct a sentence. So, verb has been an indispensable part for the formation of your thoughts. And it helps to convey the message correctly. Right. Just look at the picture. Here you have different words that show different actions. The first one, drink, eat, write, sleep, play, laugh and read. All these words are called verbs and they are action words. So verbs are important because they help us to communicate about different events in our lives by combining words into sentences. Right. What are the different types of verbs? There are many types. Action verbs, linking verbs, auxiliary verbs, finite and non-finite verbs, regular and irregular verbs. Right. Okay. Let us see them one by one quickly and move to modal auxiliary verbs. Right. Look at this picture now. You can see many actions and here the action verbs from the first. Play, cook, run, swim, laugh, read, sleep and bark. Right. So these verbs are called action verbs. Okay. Just look at the definition of the action verb. Action verbs are dynamic verbs that express an action whether it is a physical or mental. Look at the picture on your left side. The boy kicks the football. Here the verb is kicks. And it takes an object, football, to make the sentence complete. So it is called a transitive verb. Towards the right, you can see a boy. What is he doing? Yeah, he sleeps. Look at the sentence. The boy sleeps. Here the verb is sleeps. And this sentence gives a complete meaning. There is no need for an object. So, this verb is called an intransitive verb. So, in action verb, we have two verbs, transitive verb and intransitive verb. Right. Let's move to the next one. And we have other verbs like linking verbs. Linking verbs they do not show any action. They simply link the subject with the rest of the sentence. For example, look at the picture. He looks tired. Here the verb looks connects the subject. The subject is he and tired. So here looks is a linking verb. Right. We can see some more examples. He became a lawyer. The egg smells rotten. She remains faithful. In all these three sentences, you can see the verb became, 
smells, remains, they all are linking verbs. Okay, moving to our topic, auxiliary verbs. So what is an auxiliary verb? Auxiliary verb is a helping verb. It is used with action verbs to show tense or to form questions and negative sentence. Look at the three pictures. From the left, a boy is eating a mango. Right, look at the sentence. Raja is eating mangoes. And the next one. Do you want coffee? On the right side. They were not present for the function. Here, in the first sentence, for the verb eat in the gerund form, here the auxiliary verb is is. And in the second sentence, the auxiliary verb is do. And in the third one, it is in the negative form, where plus not. So here, these verbs act as helping verbs. So they are called auxiliary verbs, right? And we have other types of verbs too. They are finite verb, non-finite verb. Finite verb is nothing but that is finished. And non-finite verb is a verb that is not finished. Okay, moving to the next type of verbs are regular or irregular verbs. And it's the basic concept about verbs and their usages and regular verbs they have their base form that is the present form and the past tense and the past participle and how they are categorized play by adding ed played and again for the past participle adding ed Okay, let's move to the irregular verbs. For irregular verbs, we have base form, past tense, and past participle. And look at the divisions. Put, put, put. Sit, sat, sat. And eat, ate, eaten. We have three different forms for the irregular verbs. Right. Let's come to our main topic, auxiliary verbs, right. Auxiliary verbs are divided into two types. One is primary auxiliary verbs and another one is modal auxiliaries, right. Just have a overlook of the primary auxiliary verbs, right. The first one is B form of verbs and the second one do form of verbs and the third one have form of verbs. In the first one you can see the present forms as well as the past tense right for B form of verbs am is are and for the past tense was were and for do form of verbs do does and for past tense did. For have form of verbs in present tense, have, has, and in past tense, had. Right. Let's come to modal auxiliaries. Modal auxiliaries is a special auxiliary which is used to denote a particular mood or to express the subject. That is expression of the subject. Okay, what are the modal auxiliaries? Can and the past form could, may, might, shall, should, will, would and must. So we have nine modal auxiliaries. Right, and we have semi-modals. Semi-modals are verbs that function as modal but in specific circumstances. But 
because they perform other functions as well they are categorized separately from the original true modals so the another name for semi modal is quasi modals and here we have four how to used to need to dare to so in total we have 9 plus 4 13 modal auxiliary verbs right let us learn them one by one in a detailed way right the first one can can is used to show or express ability of a person or to convey a request permission or offer or in the negative form look at the sentence on the right side for ability i can speak english and for permission can i go to the library and for request can you lend me a pen please and for offer i can lend you a pen then for the negative cannot you cannot wait here right so these are some of the things which are some of the ways to express the mood by using the modal auxiliary can coming to the next one the past form of can is could here it can be used to show the ability or to express a polite request look at the picture a boy is playing a guitar right look at the sentence he could play a guitar look at the next picture a boy with a bag right look at the sentence there could you please come with me that is a polite request so for polite request you can use could moving to the next one may and might may is to show the possibility and for permission and also for making a wish right look at the picture a girl with a number law right so the possibility here is it may rain today and for using might it might rain today there is a slight difference in using may as well as might when you use might the meaning has to be less possible than may right now look at the next picture there's a man with a chair may i sit here right it shows the permission and look at the next one might i ask you a question normally we don't construct a sentence like this in the written form here this structure is used in more formal way might i ask you a question right look at the last one wish may is used to convey a wish may god bless you right i think you have got a clear idea about can could and then may and might let's move to the next category must must can be used to show force necessity or to give advice or an obligation right look at the picture the first picture a woman and a girl right look at the sentence i must go to the supermarket today so there may be a force or there may be a necessity look at the second one there is a picture of apj abdul kalam 
right look at the sentence you must read kalam's wings of fire here must is used to show a advice or express an advice right look at the next picture a dog is sitting on a chair you must wear seat belt when you drive right so here it is an obligation it's a request right one thing you have to notice must and should are both modal verbs must is used when expressing obligation or an unavoidable requirement whereas should is different right the next one shall and should shall is used to express a suggestion and obligation and should again for showcasing an advice or confirmation right let us go for the shall look at the first picture look at the first sentence shall i carry you a bag so that is a suggestion next one obligation i shall meet you at 6 pm so polite request maybe let's move to should look at the picture right what is happening there right now look at the sentence you should switch off the lights when you go out so that's the advice right look at the next picture right look at the sentence you should drive carefully on the highway so confirmation you should drive carefully on the highway it may be a bit kind of advice but you have to be careful on the highway right going to the next one will and would for will it is used to show wish request demand or an order and the other usages are for prediction assumption and spontaneous decision right look at the first sentence will you please shut the door here it's an order the next one i think it will rain on friday here it is a prediction and the third one can somebody take me to the hospital i will it's a spontaneous decision so in this three types will is used coming to the next one would look at the usage would habits in the past as well as would is used to show a wish or request look at the sentence would you shut the door please and look at the second sentence sometimes he would bring some flowers right i think you have got a clear view about the usage of shall should and will and would okay let's move to the other auxiliary verb that is semi modals in semi modal as i told you we have four how to used to need to and to right come on let's start from how to right how to is used to show a duty a necessity and for a moral obligation right look at the picture look at the first sentence you how to submit your assignment on time here how to is used to show a formal duty right coming to the next one how to is used to show a necessity 
we have to hire some furniture for the party right that is a necessity here and for moral obligation look at the picture we have to help the needy right going to the next one used to used to refers to the habits in the past my grandfather used to go for long walks when he was a young boy but now he is old now he is unable to walk right so the habits in the past can be expressed by using used to right coming to the next one look at the picture a girl sleeps maybe inside a classroom so how do we use this by using used to right i used to sleep inside the classroom when i was studying my kindergarten or when i was in my elementary school right now let's move to the next one need to and dare to need to is used to express the necessity and for conveying a moral obligation right look at the picture a girl with a milk packet right look at the sentence i need to buy a packet of milk coming to the next picture we need to keep our environment clean so it's a obligation right let's come to how to use datu datu is used to express boldness and challenge look at the picture can you see anything right yes da boldness i da not go out in the dark so in this kind of situation you can use da to to show the boldness right coming to the next picture yes how da you enter my room it's a challenge okay so we have learned all the four types of semi modal how to used to need to and that to and earlier we have learned the nine forms of modals what are they can could will would shall should and may might and as well as must right shall we move to a few textual exercises just take your book turn to the page number 14 right are you ready we shall learn to get the answer for the first five sentences from the task 1 okay just look at the sentence question a the candidates dash answer five out of 10 questions so what modal can be filled here right should the candidates should answer five out of 10 questions coming to the next one b how does you open my bag yeah you have the bag how and there is a question mark so the correct answer is that how does you open my bag right coming to the c tajdin dash finish this work by monday maybe it can be used to express his ability right tajudin can finish this work by monday coming to the next one dash i go to school today there is a question right yeah you can use may may i go to school today right come to the e i wish 
you dash tell me the truth and here you can use could i wish you could tell me the truth okay let's move to the right side task 2 i have given first five sentences from the textual exercise complete the following sentence with models using the clues given you have a clue at the end of the sentence just try the first one you dash help the needy and here you have to use modal or semi modal for the expression of obligation you out help the needy right coming to the next question if i were you i does not behave like that and here that uh, is a conditional so what model will be the best one would if i were you i would not behave like that would w o u l d right coming to the next one c i does never tell a lie and here the clue is given as determination right yes the answer is will i will never tell a lie coming to the d my uncle does have reached by now here it shows possibility right yes already we have land it may rain right may my uncle may have reached by now right when there is less possibility we have to use might okay coming to the last one the patient is critical he does be taken to the hospital and here you have to express with the clue of compulsion all right you can use should or must must the patient is critical he must be taken to the hospital right we have completed a few sentences from task 1 and task 2 from your textbook page number 14 let us learn a few common mistakes while using the modal verbs so here towards the left you have all the modal auxiliary verbs can could may might shall should must and the other two are two are will and would right so you have two columns one is the wrong one and another one is the correct formation right the first common mistakes that we commit in using the modal auxiliary verbs is a modal verb auxiliary verb should not be followed by to if you write i can to write or he may to play here it's wrong so it has to be expressed by without to so a model is not followed by to so the correct way of writing is i can write he may play come to the next one and no final yes look at the second model she should eat the correct way of writing is she should eat right moving to the third one and not in past form after modal the past form by writing that is in the form of ed or in the past participle form it should not be followed the wrong way of expressing is we must play it so the correct way is we must play we should play coming to the next one not in ing form so like the past form a model should not be followed by an ing form of verb they shall writing is wrong so the correct way of expression is they shall write okay students 
These are some of the common mistakes they commit while using the modal auxiliary verbs. Right. I think you have learned a lot about modal auxiliaries and semi-modals and had a an overview about the different form of verbs. Right. So here is a simple task that you can do when you are free in your home. Practice makes a man perfect. Try to write many sentences using this modal auxiliary verbs and semi-modals thinking a different situations. Right. This is the task we are giving to you by writing simple dialogues using modals and semi-modals. Just there is a format given here. It's a dialogue. Ravi and Raj are conversing and here is a clue. Can you help me? And Raj, sure. And again Ravi, okay, shall we go to the library? And the response of the Raj has to be filled by you. And just keep going by writing the other dialogues so that you will have a great practice of writing this modal and semi-modal. Okay students, with this you are concluding this video. Keep reading, keep learning, enjoy your learning. Thank you. Meet you in the next video. Bye bye. பற்றிய தங்களின் மேலான கருத்துக்களை கீழ்கண்ட முகவரிக்கு கடிதம் மூலமாகவோ மின்னஞ்சல் மூலமாகவோ குறுஞ்செய்தி மூலமாகவோ தெரியப்படுத்தலாம் அனுப்ப வேண்டிய முகவரி சிறப்பு அலுவலர் கல்வி தொலைக்காட்சி எட்டாம் தளம் அண்ணா நூற்றாண்டு நூலகம் காந்தி மண்டப சாலை கோட்டூர்புரம் சென்னை ஆறு தொலைபேசி எண் ஏழு எட்டு இரண்டு நான்கு பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்று ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம்